Hi, I'm Erica, an associate editor at Book Riot. I'm back to bring you some new releases for the week of October 26th. So without further ado, let's shimmy on into them. So the first book I have for you is The House of Rust by Khadija Abdallah Bajabir. This is an enchanting novel about a Hadrami girl in Mombasa, Kenya. When her fisherman father goes missing, Aisha takes to the sea on a magical boat made of a skeleton to rescue him. She is guided by a talking scholar's cat, who is more than a little sarcastic, as well as other animals, among them crows and goats. On this journey, Aisha meets three terrifying sea monsters after she survives a final confrontation with Baba Wapapa, the father of all sharks. She rescues her father in hopes that life will return to normal. But at home, things only grow stranger. Khadija Abdallah Bajavir's debut is a magical, realist, coming-of-age tale told through the lens of the Swahili and diasporic Hadrami culture in Mombasa, Kenya. Richly descriptive and written with an imaginative hand and sharp eye for unusual detail, this is sure to be a memorable novel by a thrilling new voice. So, The House of Rust is also the first Grey Wolf Press African fiction prize winner. It has, as mentioned before, beautiful language and really explores the various complexities of coming of age and into one's own. Aisha is a well-rounded protagonist with a strong will and a nature that can be both generous and selfish at times, which I feel is kind of a more realistic portrayal of a person. Uh, it also reminds me of Kiki's Delivery Service. Uh, especially with the sarcastic cat companion. Um, it's a unique story that we don't get to see too many books have, which is it has the magical realism component that takes place in Kenya. So I think it's really interesting and I'm sure you will love it. Next on the list is All the Feels by Olivia Dade. Alexander Woodrow has it all. Charm, sex appeal, wealth, fame, a starring role as Cupid on TV's biggest show, Gods of the Gates, but the showrunners have wrecked his character, he's dogged by old demons, and his post-show future remains uncertain. When all that reckless emotion explodes into a bar fight, the tabloids in public agree his star is falling. Enter Lauren Clegg, the former ER therapist hired to keep him in line. Compared to her previous work, watching over handsome but impulsive Alex shouldn't be especially difficult, but the more time they spend together, the harder it gets to keep her professional remove and her heart intact, especially when she discovers the reasons behind his recklessness. Not to mention his Cupid fan fiction habit. When another scandal lands Alex in major hot water and costs Lauren her job, she'll have to choose between protecting him and offering him what he really wants, which is her. But he's determined to keep his improbably short, impossibly stubborn, and extremely endearing minder in his life any way he can. And on a road trip up the California coast together, he intends to show her exactly what a falling star will do to catch the woman he loves, which is anything at all. This is a follow-up to Spoiler Alert that promises to be just as fun as the first. Dade handles tropes, romantic tropes in an interesting way, and Alex's love of fan fiction adds more endearing points to his character. Both characters grow individually as well as together. Next on the list is Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine M. Valente. Sophia was made for him, her perfect husband. She can feel it in her bones. He is perfect. Their home together in Arcadia Gardens is perfect. Everything is perfect. It's just that he's away so much, so often. He works so hard. She misses him and he misses her. He says he does, so it must be true. He's a perfect husband and everything is perfect. But sometimes Sophia wonders about things, strange things, dark things. The look on her husband's face when he comes back from a long business trip. The questions he will not answer. The locked basement she is never allowed to enter. And whenever she asks the neighbors, they can't quite meet her gaze. But everything is perfect, isn't it? So Comfort Me With Apples is, if you couldn't already tell, perfect for the end of October. Sounds super creepy, very atmospheric. It's a terrifying new thriller, so I might even say horror, from bestseller Catherine and Valente for fans of Gone Girl and Spinning Silver. Read it if you want a totally unique and unsettling 
read that will keep you engaged for all of its brief 112 pages. I love novellas for, I don't know, I think they tell a story obviously very concisely, very uh, briefly at times and I really respect that especially when I'm not in the mood to read something bigger, longer. So novellas always come in clutch for me. Plus this is like a spooky, weird, you know, creepy one. So perfect for, perfect for the season. The next book I have for you is Far From the Light of Heaven by Todd Thompson. The colony ship Ragtime docks in a Lego system, having traveled light years from home to bring thousands of sleeping souls to safety among the stars. Some of the sleepers, however, will never wake. As a profound and sinister mystery unfolds aboard the gigantic vessel, its skeleton crew makes decisions that will have repercussions for all of humanity's settlements, from the scheming politics on Lego Station to the colony planet of Bloodroot to other far-flung systems and indeed Earth itself. So this is a tense and thrilling mystery told in space from the author of Rosewater. It's space opera adjacent and has wonderful Afro-futurist elements and quirky characters that bring humor and delightful strangeness. So next on the list I have Orwell's Roses by Rebecca Solnit. In the year 1936, a writer planted roses. So begins Rebecca Solnit's new book, a reflection on George Orwell's passionate gardening and the way that his involvement with plants, particularly flowers, and the natural world illuminates his other commitments as a writer and anti-fascist and the intertwined politics of nature and power. So this is a lush exploration of roses, pleasure, politics, and a fresh take on George Orwell, who was an avid gardener and whose political writing was grounded in his passion for the natural world. Sparked by her unexpected encounter with the surviving roses he planted in 1936, Solnit's account of this understudied aspect of Orwell's life explores his writing and his actions from going deep into the coal mines of England, fighting in the Spanish Civil War, critiquing Stalin, when much of the international left still supported him, and then carrying on to critique that left, to his analysis of the relationship between lies and authoritarianism. The book draws to a close with a rereading of 1984 that completes her portrait of a more hopeful Orwell, as well as a reflection on pleasure, beauty, and joy as acts of resistance. Last book I have for you is Monster in the Middle by Tiffany Unique. When Fly and Stella meet in 21st century New York City, it seems like fate. He's a Black American musician from a mixed religious background who knows all about heartache. She's a Catholic science teacher from the Caribbean looking for lasting love. But are they meant to be? Hmm. The answer goes back decades, all the way to their parents' earliest loves. Vi vibrant and emotionally riveting, Monster in the Middle moves across decades, from the US to the Virgin Islands to Ghana and back again, to show how one couple's romance is intrinsically influenced by the family lore and love stories that preceded their own pairing. What challenges and traumas must this new couple inherit? What hopes and ambitions will keep them moving forward? Exploring desire and identity, religion and class, passion and obligation, the novel posits that in order to answer the question, who are we meant to be with, we must first understand who we are and how we came to be. So definitely pick up this book if you're looking for lyrical writing on how generational issues get passed down and how they manifest into the present day. There's also an interesting and often unexplored examination of who we fall in love with here and how the people we fall in love with are not just who we see in front of us, but they are their own entire histories. So that's a really interesting take, I think. So those are all the books I have for you today. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in any of these or if there's another book coming out today or this week or that came out recently that we haven't discussed and that you have put on your TBR. My TBR is already extensive, but I like adding new books to it because I just like to know about books, obviously. Um, it was nice seeing you all again. I hope to see you not next week, but the week after. Next week, Danica will hit you with some new releases. Until next time, happy reading.